Hello again and welcome to my studio. Today's video is about preparing a panel for painting in oils. I frequently get questions about why I bother to prepare my own materials and thought I'd make a video describing my process. I've always been interested in materials and techniques since I first learned how to make paint in scenic painting class at university. I was also encouraged by my figure drawing teacher, Lloyd McNeil, that there is value to controlling the format of media that you use. Plus, it's just fun to do. Here are some of the tools I'll be using. Safety first, so I have safety goggles, a dust mask, and ear protection when necessary. I use my table saw, though you certainly could just buy the stock ready-made, a chop saw, or a miter box if you want to work by hand, a staple gun, staples, brad nailer, a corner clamp, and a hot plate. I'll also be using a double boiler to heat the glue, scissors, a pencil, utility knife, bristle brush, a stir stick, yogurt containers for mixing, a measuring cup for water, and a digital scale. The materials I'll be using are one by pine, which is really three quarters, cut into inch and a half strips. You can probably get these at the lumber yard already cut. I use wood glue, nails, natural non-flame retardant painter's linen, rabbit skin glue, alum, and 1 8 inch or 4 millimeter masonite. You can also use luon or birch plywood. I prefer to work on a hard surface as I paint with thick paint and often use palette knives. Panels take a bit more time to prepare, but it's what works for me. I find it easier to purchase my small panels rather than building them from scratch. The prices are cheaper if I get them on sale. The larger panels, however, start to get expensive, so I make those myself. First, making the cradle. I'm ripping my 1 by 8 pine into 1 and a half inch strips. If you don't have a saw, you should be able to get it already that size or close to it. I've also used 3 quarter ply or scrap lumber. I'm using a chop saw here with a stop block set to the dimensions to make the pieces consistent. You can use a hand saw and miter box if you don't have the power tools. Remember to subtract an inch and a half from the width of two sides to allow for the thickness. Here I'm using a corner clamp to assemble the frame. I glue it with wood glue and nail using my brad nailer. The nailer was a good investment, as I use it for framing my artwork as well. I then mount the masonite using wood glue, clamping it securely after squaring it up. The ready-made panels I buy are made of birch plywood. I've also used Luan plywood Now I'll prepare the glue. This is a finely ground gelatin. The proportion is 70 grams per liter of water. Put this aside for soaking overnight. Next prepare the alum solution. I use a 10% solution or 7 grams per liter of glue. Soak it overnight but don't add it to the gelatin just yet. By morning the glue will have set like jello. I place this in the double boiler and set the hot plate to low. It should liquefy at about 140 degrees. It's important to use the double boiler so that it doesn't get scalded. 
If the glue boils, it will be ruined, and there's nothing worse than the smell of burned glue. Once the glue is heated, you can add the alum. It acts like a hardening agent for the glue, making it less water soluble. Now we're gonna seal the panels. While the glue is warm, coat all sides of your panel and let them dry overnight. The glue will seal both the back and front from moisture. Don't rush the drying by putting panels in the sun or a heater. This will cause cracking and warping of the panel. Now we'll cover it with linen. While you certainly can skip this step and gesso the wood directly, I prefer the linen surface. It gives a clean look to edges and strengthens it as well. I start with painter's linen that I've purchased at the theatrical supply. It comes in 10 foot width of any length and costs about $46 per linear yard, or about $1.50 per square foot. Linen from art supply stores can be three times that amount. Here I'm cutting a scrap to size, allowing enough to wrap around the frame to be stapled on the back. I pre-soak the fabric with glue before placing the panel face down on top of it. Next, I start stapling the fabric using 3 8 staples placed around 2 inches apart. Work from the centers out, gradually working your way to the corners to avoid wrinkles. I then fold the corners and staple, being sure to make the folds are on the same sides, either top and bottom, or on the two sides. I'll then coat the completed panel with a layer of glue all around, making sure there are no bubbles and the fabric is saturated. Set the panels aside overnight to dry. Making the gesso. Be sure to wear a dust mask as the particles of pigment and marble dust are very fine and dangerous to inhale. Gesso has three parts, the pigment, the marble dust, and the glue. Some use chalk dust instead of marble dust, but the marble dust is fine. I use a 50-50 mix by volume of fine marble dust flour and titanium white. Combine the two powders and mix well. Next, take some of the warm glue you've already used to seal the panels. Add the glue gradually to the dry mixture while stirring so you won't get lumps. Make sure the gesso doesn't get too thin, however. I prefer it to be the consistency of sour cream or thick paint. It's better to apply two to three thinner coats. Next, coat the linen covered panel or other surface uniformly, working the brush into the fabric. It's important that it not be applied too thickly. Cover the sides as well. I prefer to finish by running a trowel over the surface lightly. But you can also use a brush pattern or even stipple the surface with a sponge. I do three coats, allowing each coat to dry before doing the next. If you'd like a smooth surface, you can sand between coats or I trowel each coat before it dries. Here I'm sanding after the final coat. Use 400 grit wet dry sandpaper with some water to avoid making dust. 
After a quick swipe with a damp sponge, the panel will be ready to paint. I've used two primary sources for these formulas. Both are encyclopedic. The first is The Materials and Techniques of Painting by Kurt Welty. It's translated and published by Kremer Pigments in New York, but it may be difficult to find, so I'll include the formulas that I use. I also have learned a great deal from the author Tad Spurgeon about materials, color theory, traditional methods, and solvent-free oil painting. His book, The Living Craft, is available on his website. I hope you've enjoyed this video documenting my painting process. I hope to be making more on the materials and techniques of painting. You can explore more of my work on my website, www.jamesgloria.com, or contact me at art at jamesgloria.com with questions or comments. And be sure to sign up for my emails to learn more about my upcoming classes and workshops, exhibits, and more. Thank you again for watching my video.